This is Mr. Priscilla continuing to work on the review sheet for the college algebra final exam. We're up to problem number four, which says write this number in standard form A plus BI. You have six minus the square root of a negative 108. all over 2. <clears throat> well, we need to simplify that square root of negative 108. I'm just going to come right out here and simplify that. Since it's the square root of a negative number, that means we have an imaginary number. So I'll go ahead and write a green eye there because of that green square, this negative under the square root is green. And we need perfect squares. What perfect square divides into <clears throat> 108? So punching into your calculator. 108 divided by 4. 108 divided by 9. 16. 25. The biggest perfect square that divides into 108 is a 36. 36 times 3 would give us a 108. Now the square root of 36 would be 6 and it's standard form to put the i before the square root of 3. <clears throat> so now let me rewrite this replacing all of this square root with 6i square root of 3. So I have the purple 6 minus 6i square root of 3 all over 2. Let's just put them each over 2 so we can easily cancel and we'd be left 2 goes into 6, 3 minus 2 goes into 6, 3 i square root of 3. So 3 minus 3 i square root of 3 there's a lot of threes here. D. <clears throat> now, problem number five. Find this product. Nine minus four I times two plus nine I. Well, here we're multiplying complex numbers. And in order to multiply complex numbers, we're just going to boil it out and then after we boil it out we'll use the fact that i squared is equal to what? What does i squared equal? Negative 1. So let's see, boiling all of this out We'll have a 18 <clears throat> plus 81i minus 8i and a minus 36i squared. Before we start combining like terms, we replace the i squared with a negative 1. So we would have a negative 36 times negative 1 all that does is change the sign right there in front of the 36 negative 36 times a negative 1 that's a positive 36 so that's what we're going to use now and combine the like terms so combining the like terms we have 18 plus 36 that would be 54 <coughs> Let's see, 81i minus 8i, is that a 73i? So we have 54 plus 73i, that would be a b. Okay. Now problem number 6. Solve this equation using the quadratic formula. Okay. 
in order to use the quadratic formula, we've got to have it in that standard form with a zero on one side. What I'm going to do is move the 10 in, in and the 2 over. So I'm adding 10 in and adding 2 <coughs> to get a zero. So here's our A is 4, B is 10, C is 2, and here's the quadratic formula. Negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So plugging in. Negative B plus minus, oh, let me lift this up a little. Plus minus the square root of B squared. I always do B squared in my head, 10 times 10, 100. Minus 4 times A times C. A is the purple 4. C is 2. All over 2 times A. The 2 times A I do in my head. 2 times 4, 8. <coughs> Now let's simplify underneath this square root. You might want to punch it into your calculator. Or 4 times 4 is 16 times 2 is 32. 100 minus 32 is a 68. And to simplify the square root of 68, if you look at our answer choices, odds are 3 to 1. There's going to be a 17 in it. So to simplify that 68, let's see, what perfect square would divide evenly into 68? Well, a 4. 4 times 17, you might want to use your calculator or multiply it out yourself, convince yourself that's 68. Now the square root of 4 is 2. 17 stays under there. So let me rewrite it all with one color, replacing the square root with 2 square root of 17 all over 8. And to simplify this, if I want just one big fraction, I could separate it, but then my answer is not going to look the same as what I have here. What I'll do is look at the three numbers that are not under the square root. 10, 2, and 8. What can I divide all of those by? Well, a 2. If I divide above and below by 2, negative 10 over 2 would be negative 5. The 2 over 2 would be 1, so just square root of 17. 8 over 2 is 4. Six. Now let's see what's number seven. Ooh, number seven is pretty involved. Rational function. Let me write it down. Problem seven. Negative 5x squared minus 6 over x minus 4 equals negative 15x over x minus 4 and plus 6. I'm spreading it out because I'm going to have to multiply straight through by what to get rid of the, fr uh, the fractions. Well, the only denominator that we have is x minus 4. So simply multiplying straight through by x minus 4 will sure get those denominators to cancel out. Be sure to also multiply the 6 by x minus 4. So what do we have here? It looks sort of messy. We have a negative 5x squared minus 6 
Here's the green equals a negative 15x distributing that 6 we'd have a plus 6x and a minus 24 now this is a quadratic equation because there's the x squared so whether you want to factor it or use the quadratic formula you still need to write it in that standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero I always like the x squared coefficient to be positive so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to move these over to the right and get a zero over here on the uh, left so that would be adding 5x squared Okay, so moving the 5x squared over here. Hopefully at this stage of the game you're used to my little arrows. Uh, combining the x's, negative 15 plus 6, that's a negative 9x. Moving that 6 over would be adding 6, so minus 18. Okay. Now, looking at the solutions, if it's these three it's going to factor. If it's this one, it's going to have to be a quadratic formula. This one will factor. Okay? So, numbers that multiply together to give 5. Well, just 1 and 5. Numbers that multiply together to give an 18. Well, there's a lot of them. Well, not a lot. 1 and 8. Well, theoretically, there's infinitely many. But when we talk about whole numbers, 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. To decide get this thing factored, I'll draw my two sets of parentheses, 1x times 5x, and which pair would probably work or is going to work? Looking at the answer choices, there's threes and sixes, not twos and fives, so I'm going to try the three and six. I need the 3 and 6 to multiply together to give a negative 18. I need these middle terms, outer and inner, to combine to give a negative 9x. So I need a plus and a minus in the parentheses. In what order? Well, I would need the minus on the 3. So I'd have negative 15x plus 6x. That gives me the negative 9x. So I factored it. Now set each one of the factors to 0. Oh, we. There's nothing wrong with your phone or computer that you're watching this on. The blinking is just because the motion detector didn't detect enough movement in here. So we have x equals 3. And x equals negative 6 over 5. So 3 and negative 6 over 5. Let's see. 3 and negative 6 over 5. That is C, isn't it? Hey, what about number 6? I didn't fill in the blank. Uh, negative 5 plus minus, is it B? Okay. Well, uh, thanks for watching. We'll pick up in a little bit. Let's take a little break right now. Again, this is Mr. Priscilla. Thanks for watching. We're working on the review sheet for a uh, face-to-face uh, in-class final exam.